Barnum Brook. Could you please rise and welcome all the brave men and women of the armed services to our school. school's annual Memorial Day ceremony. Welcome students, faculty, parents, community members, and our wonderful military veterans. Before we begin our patriotic program, please remember to turn off all cell phones and remove any noisy children. We have worked very hard to set a respectful tone and our honored guests deserve our whole attention. Thank you. On September 14, 1814, U.S. soldiers at Baltimore's Fort McHenry raised a huge American flag to celebrate a crucial victory over British forces during the War of 1812. Late that night, we were caught in a fierce fight. Our proud flag flew over this great fort and was still waving proudly as the morning fog lifted. Francis Scott Key wrote a poem to remind us of this hard-fought victory and of the proud symbolism representing our country. Please rise and join us as we sing our national anthem. And bright. 
gathered here today are so thankful to be able to send our home as the United States of America. We are grateful for our country and our freedom. On Memorial Day, our flag takes on another meaning, a symbol of the brave men and women who sacrificed everything for our country. From a poem by Kate Englehart Clark, flags today in tribute wave for those loyal ones who gave of their youth, their hopes, their might for a cause that knew was right. We are so lucky to live in our wonderful country, the United States of America. We are blessed to have so many opportunities and choices in our lives. We are forever grateful to the men and women of the military who protect these rights and our freedom. The youngest members of our school community would like to present a special song celebrating our great country. Please give a warm welcome to our kindergarten students. officer in the Canadian military during World War I wrote a few lines on a piece of paper to express his grief over the death of a friend and a fellow soldier. McCray described the scene before him of poppies blowing in the wind around the newly marked graves of fallen soldiers in the Flanders region of Belgium. In December of 1950, the poem in Flanders Field was published in a popular British magazine. After the poppy flower became a symbol to be worn in honor of those who have died in battle, the flower of remembrance. Here today we honor those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our country as the students of Mrs. Landry's class recite this ionic poem. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks so bravely singing fly, searched amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt on, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in heavy field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. 
if you need work, pay for us to die, we shall not sleep, go coffee, grow, and play their skills. And the sacrifices so many have made to help our great country to last. Now we continue to follow the course our forefathers placed in our trust. Together in freedom, united we stand, carrying on as we must. The future belongs to each one of us here, no matter how obstacles seem. Pursuing the happiness we are endowed, we share our American dream. We share it all over this great land of ours, but that's the American way. We're in this Together, we're living now, Americans we are every day. Several students will now sing a truly patriotic piece to honor all of our veterans and heroes. who protect our freedom, rights, and choices, which we enjoy as Americans. We have five proud branches of the American Armed Forces, and we welcome representatives of these forces here today. The five branches are the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard, and the Air Force. Please, please join in as we pay tribute to our military men and women in this rousing medley. Thank okay. you. 
and a warm welcome to the representatives who honor us with their presence today. We would like to give our special honored guests a chance to speak to our student body today. Please feel free to come and join us. Good morning, Pepperell. It's just awesome to see everybody out, everybody out there today, standing room only. It's, it, to me, it looks like one of the biggest we've had in a long, long time. And as you can, as, as you can hear, there's a good reason for it. Uh, on behalf of the veterans standing here and all the veterans in the audience, I'd like to thank each and every one of you, A, for putting this together, B, for being here and supporting us. So could I have all the veterans please stand everywhere? Thank you, veterans. And, and I know there's a few that didn't stand. A lot of us are very shy about what we've done because we didn't do it for ourselves. We did it for each and every one of you. And we're happy to do that and we'd do it again in a heartbeat. So let me uh, hand off to other individuals that we have set up to speak and then we'll open it up for anybody else who would like to say a few quick words. Uh, for the Army, could I have Corporal Bob Newton, please? It has been over 20 years that I've attended these gatherings at the elementary school in Peppa. And I want to say, they get better every, every year. It's nice to be here. It's nice to see you all. And my gosh, we got a crowd today. Thank you for everything. And I have to say one more thing. I promised I would say hello a fellow named Ryan, who I am a pen pal with. So I do that. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Now from the United States Navy, I'd like to ask E5 Al Buckley to come forward. It's so great to see uh, that Pepper is such a patriotic town that they do this every year. We have so much, so many young, lo lovely young children here, men and women, that help their families grow well. And um, I'd like to thank all the military before my time that allowed me to do my time in the military. And I'd like to thank all the military who are serving now for me. And that's what we always keep in mind that um, we do love what we do. We don't do it, like I say, for glory. We just do it because we really love to serve one another. And uh, I thank you again. And um, please serve your town in any way you can, because that's what keeps us together and keeps us growing well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Al. Now from the United States Marine Corps, Sergeant Go. Morning, Barnbrook. I look forward to this every year. Um, so, this year I just want to go over a little story. Gab, come on up. So, every Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Somebody gets a little excited about a week ahead of time and is up at 0.30 getting their uniforms ready. And it's not me. <laughs> so in the past, some of you may remember that Gavin chose to wear the Marine Corps uniform, which Dad loved. Mom loved, made her nervous, but Mom loved as well. Gavin um, is fortunate enough um, Dad served in the Marines, grandfather served in the Army, uh, his other grandfather served in the Marine Corps, but Gavin had two great-grandfathers that served in World War II. 
So he asked me this year, he said, Dad, should I bring the Marine Corps or the Navy uniform from Gopo? And Gopo's his great grandfather that served in World War II, which he's wearing today. So I said, buddy, I think that you should wear what you want to wear. And he chose to wear the uniform of his great grandfather, who fought in World War II, who served in the Navy. And his decision was based on what Memorial Day is all about. Memorial Day is a day that we remember those who are no longer with us and have made the ultimate sacrifice. So. I just wanted to say that um, I'm very thankful for all of you for your support um, and all the other veterans uh, that are no longer with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant. As you see, this, this ceremony, this day means a lot to all of us. Uh, and Rounding up the list, I would like to ask the representative of the Air Force, Lieutenant Colonel Green. On behalf of the United States Air Force, all the active duty, National Guard reserves, retired, and veterans, I really want to thank you for this program. I thank the United States Air Force for bringing me to Pepperell some 35 years ago or more. I can't even remember how long ago it was. But this is absolutely fantastic. The number of people that are here, the town, the kids, and I thank my grandchildren, Alina, for inviting me to come this year. My grandchildren always invite me to come to this. And I look forward to it with enthusiasm and a little trepidation because I'm always worried about if this is the year that I can't stuff myself back into a 30-year-old <laughs> uniform. But so far, I've managed to do it. So uh, from that standpoint, it's a great time. And just looking out at these kids, the program, the faculty at John and Brook, what they do every year, it's just a great town. And all the people, all the veterans, and the families, it's not just us as veterans, as military, it's our families. And I'd like the families of the veterans to stand up. I know there, there are a lot out here. Um, and the children also who have veterans in the, in the military. They do as much work as we do as veterans. And finally, uh, just one last thing, and I hope you'll bear with me for this. <clears throat> the reason we're here for Memorial Day is for those people who made the ultimate sacrifice. And 50 years ago, a dear friend of mine was killed in Vietnam on May 7th, Lance Corporal Roger Dawn. And I know that he's looking down today on this gathering here in Pepperell, and he's proud of all the people, all the children, all the veterans, for what you've done and for how you honored us today. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart and from here. Thank you, Colonel. Now I'd like to open up to, would anybody else like to say a few words uh, to the kids and the families? I don't know if I actually need this, but every time I come in here, I've been here for a long time. This is most some of those other people who are here for the first time. I've been here a long time. It's, this is unbelievable. But I'd be remiss if I didn't do my proper duty 
and recognize the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts that are here. If you're pleased, would stand up if you're a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout. Daisy, Brownie. Outstanding. Go ahead and be seated again. But this program would not work if we didn't have the volunteers, the den mothers, the fathers. If you are in the program as a parent or a leader, please stand. Do we have anybody here? Please stand. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Paul Rakey. I am past commander of Pepple VFW, currently quartermaster of the VFW. For the past oh, 10 or 15 years, I've had the honor of being the master of ceremonies at the Memorial Day services on uh, Memorial Day down at the town hall. Uh, we have an awesome parade, um, and we go to all the cemeteries, and then we have our honor guide pay our respects for all the fallen veterans who have passed. Last year was a very um, interesting year because if you recall on Memorial Day last year, we had torrential rains. And uh, the day before, we at the post were in communication with the Board of Selectmen to try to decide what to do because it was supposed to be uh, severe lightning as well. And we had to make a decision on whether or not to cancel the parade. And so the decision was made due to public safety that we needed to cancel the parade but that did not deter a very hardy group of veterans from marching on their own on Memorial Day. And this was interesting because it hit Boston News, it was on the, um, the news channels and things, and um, it was just kind of the opposite effect of what these veterans wanted to accomplish. They certainly wanted to honor uh, those who have fallen and they wouldn't let the weather deter them but they weren't looking for any kind of notoriety or popularity for doing so. It was out of respect for their fellow comrades who had perhaps either died in combat or died after that, and that they just wanted to be there with them on that day. So this year I want to make sure that all of our veterans know that they're very, very welcome to march in the parade. It's a place that they should be because it gives the town an opportunity to show their appreciation for the service. And this is a wonderful, wonderful time right now because the children are always great. The faculty and staff, we thank you so much for all you do. However, there are a lot of towns folks. We were down on Wednesday at the Senior Center to see the um, response from the seniors. So I'm reminded that the town is full of a lot of people that want to show their gratitude to the men and women who have served very, very proudly, and also pay their respects to those who have fallen. So all of my fellow veterans, you're certainly welcome to march with us, and we look forward to seeing you there. And for all of you who are going to be around for the weekend, please uh, come out and support us on Memorial Day. So thank you all very, very much. Last call till fall. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, this is my first time attending this. My name is Michael Roy Carr. I served in the U.S. Marines, 04 to 2012. I uh, was uh, raised in Pepperell. I'm 30 years old, and uh, I'd just like to say thank you for all coming out. It's nice to see all the young kids and growing up coming out here and supporting our veterans and the community. Uh, I graduated here in 2000, right before the Twin Towers fell. And I went to D.C. and that year they were still up. And the following year they weren't. I was the last class to see it, or the last trip down there. And believe it or not, my sister went back the same year, or a few years later, and took another picture. We have two pictures. One showed the monument still standing in 01. I'd say about 04, they weren't there when she took the pictures. And I'd just like to say uh, thank you all for coming out and 
I'm proud of my town and all you folks putting this on for us veterans. And I hope you all have a good day. Thanks. Hi there. Just wanted to say thank you so much for this warm welcome today. I'll make this real quick. Uh, Greta, can you stand up, sweetie? Can you hold a picture of Grandpa and Grandma? So, these are my parents, Tom and Lucy Helfer. They, uh, I'm originally from Minnesota. This uh, Memorial Day is going to be kind of a sad one for me. Uh, my mom passed away last year, and this is my first Memorial Day without my mom, who is one of my favorite veterans. And I just want to let you all know that, just to keep in mind that, uh, please keep in mind all those who serve, especially your family, loved ones who are no longer with us this year, irrespective of uh, reasons maybe. Thank you. Thank you very much, veterans. We appreciate those words. I'd like to close our section of this with, um, this all happens because of a certain group of individuals. Those are our school leadership, our school staff, our teachers. I'd last, like to ask everyone involved with the education system, please stand up. Thank you very much. We learn by example, and you have here in Pepperell some of the best examples in the world. Keep it up. Thank you all very much. So I have an amazing job. I get to teach children, and for the past several years, I've also got the wonderful opportunity to teach children who are military children, and I've taught many of your, your children, and I'm so lucky and so blessed to have had that opportunity. It's a privilege that I truly treasure. So thank you for sharing your children with us. So all throughout the school year, I try to teach my students that everyone can make a difference. And it doesn't matter who you are or even how wealthy you are, even the smallest good deed can make a difference to someone. So my class this year decided to collect for an organization here in town called the Middlesex g -Bot. This is a wonderful organi organization raising funds to support the g -Bot Veterans Monument being built right here in Pepperell. The monument is being built to honor those veterans who served in the Iraq and Afghanistan wars post 9-11. Several of our students and staff have family members who will be honored on the monument as well. And this monument will be a symbol of those sacrifices made by these veterans and their family, families, and of course those who made the ultimate sacrifice. And we thank you so much for taking on this, this very meaningful task of of building that and honoring those who fought. So from Veterans Day in November until today, we have been collecting spare change. And this week we've been counting spare change and rolling spare change with the help of Mrs. Landry's class. It's, it's, it's been kind of fun, right? But it's been a lot of work, hasn't it? We've collected enough with the help of all of VBS children and staff and local businesses and even the VFW in Jeffrey, New Hampshire 
Um, the great thing about this is that everyone was able to play a part in making this happen. Boys and girls, you made a difference. So today, it is with great pleasure, and no one except for me and Mrs. Landry knows this amount. <laughs> They've all been asking, trying to figure it out. It's with great pleasure that we, the children of Barnett Brook Elementary School, present to you our donation of $2,760.91. And I'd like to say one more thing. I'm just kind of adding this on. Anyone out there would like to match this donation? <laughs> I'm sure this group of people would, and we would absolutely love that. So it's all yours. <laughs> wow. Absolutely amazing. On behalf of Middlesex BWAT, I'm Jean Conley. I'm the chairperson of the committee. I want to thank Mrs. Myhill, her students, all of the faculty. I'm shaking. I'm so overwhelmed. And students from Bottom Brook, along with Principal Tara Hanley, for organizing the coin campaign that has yielded over $2,700 for our future monument to be built in Pepco. More importantly, I want to applaud Bottom Brook for continually honoring our veterans with this Memorial Day program. It is so important to never forget what our veterans have done for our country. And the school does a wonderful job teaching our children the importance of remembering our veterans. The monument is going to be at the Rotary. There is a flag garden there presently that was planted last Saturday. We must never forget that the families and friends that who paid the ultimate sacrifice during after 9-11 in Iraq and Afghanistan. I would ask each and every one of you to visit this flag garden this weekend. We planted 6,904 flags. Those, that's the number who have been lost in Iraq and Afghanistan. Your donation will help Middlesex G. Watt reach our goal to build a monument in Pepper to honor these veterans. This is the longest running war that America has ever been involved in. So let us not forget what our veterans do for us, and more importantly, thank you very much. Every year, I introduce the second graders to three famous Pepro people, um, and I tell them stories about them, and they have to illustrate a part of the story that I tell. And there is one winner chosen from each second grade class, and Nicholas Painting sponsors this and offers them a gift certificate to Barnes & Noble. So I have the winners today, because nobody knows. <laughs> Um, so I'd like to present, the first one is from Mrs. Howard's class. Uh, we have Cameron Troyano. So they learned about Colonel Prescott, uh, Bunker Hill, don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes. Prudence Wright, who was, uh, as the men went off to Boston, her and the women in town stopped a spy traveling through town and helped the men in Boston. And then the nine-year-old Lizzie Jones, who during the Civil War followed her father, who was uh, called up by uh, Abraham Lincoln to help guard a railroad station in Baltimore, Maryland. And so. These posters are on display as you walk out. The five posters uh, you are welcome to see, they did an amazing job. So the next person is from Mr. Meter's class. We have Dorothy Hall. Uh, the next person is from Mrs. Pedro's class, and it's Sienna Walkovich.
So I have to say this is very, very difficult, and I'm so glad that I am not the one who has to vote. Um, active military members have voted on this um, from Hanscom. Uh, the next person, she is not here, she is on vacation, but I will take it for her, but it's from Mrs. McLaughlin's class, Sarah McGranahan. Can we please have Bevan LaMonica come up, please? Thank you. My name is Darlene Kuchu. I'm from the Pepper Women's Club. And um, the Pepper Women's Club is a division of the General Federations of Women's Clubs of Massachusetts. And we support um, both programs in the local community as well as state and globally. One of the programs that we have is support of the arts. And today I'm here to proudly present an award to someone from Ms. Chappell's class, who um, Ms. Chappell had several of her students enter a writing contest at the state level, and I'm happy to say that the winner is Ms. Bevan LaMonica from the Barn Barnabas Elementary School. <laughs> Bevan is the winner of the 2016 Youth Creative Writing Contest for her short story, Jack's Eating Carpet. Congratulations, Devin. Congratulations. We have one more last presentation for you. It's actually a special presentation, and Devin's going to come back up again. For the past four years, you have been an intricate part of the Memorial and Veterans Day ceremony. Your dedication to the armed services, Barna Brook, and especially your family, have been an example for us to follow for years past and for years to come. I personally wanted to say thank you and I love you. You will be surely missed, but not only me, but everyone here. We wish you best in your future and hope you think of us often as we will you. Me and Mom would like to present you with some small tokens of appreciation. Thank you so much for all you have done and continue to do. We will miss you. This is a surprise. I, I, <laughs> thank you very much. I, um, you know, I've, been, I've been extremely lucky. Not only have I been in one place for seven years, which is unheard of, back to duty. It's usually every three or four years we move. But I've been here for the seven years. And, uh, and, and this July, it's time for me to move on, and, and I'll be going some, uh, somewhere else, Washington, D.C. area, um, and continue with my career. But I, I think I could speak for all of us that, you know, we've lived in a, quite a few states, and uh, this has been the best location that we've, uh, that we've been in. And uh, I know I'm really going to miss it. And uh, thanks so much. I mean, what a fantastic community. Thanks again. Today we remember why Memorial Day is so important to us. Make sure to pause for a moment of reflection on Monday, our national holiday at 3 p.m. to honor and remember all of our heroes. We are proud.
proud to begin our roll camera, our roll call of remembrance, which pays a tribute to all those who died in our wars, conflicts, and incidents. Revolutionary War, War of 1812, Mexican War, Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, Gulf War, Iraq and Afghanistan, conflicts and incidents. In 1862, our country was engaged in a terrible conflict, the Civil War. The sounding of the bugle used as a light, call, light out call after losing so many brave soldiers, a, new, a Union Army commander reworked the melody used and instructed used and instructed the bugler to play this new tune as a more fitting tribute to the serious time of war. Taps has become an American symbol honoring those who has, have serve, served our country. The students will now present a two-part version of Taps. We ask for a complete silence during the presentation. Please hold all applause di directly afterwards for a moment of reflection.
The casualties of war are not only those who died in battle, but also the families they left behind. President Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president, wrote of the solemn pride that must be yours to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. In a letter to a mother who lost five sons in the Civil War. We honor our unsung heroes today as we think about Memorial Day and their service to our country. Remember all family members who are veterans past and present. Our student body will now pay tribute to these Americans who have sacrificed for us. The beautiful country we live in is, we live in is thanks to them. You are our heroes and we have the, and we have protected the rights and freedoms we all enjoy today, no matter where we live, throughout our communities, our commonwealth, and our country.
everyone for being here today. We would like to especially thank all of our military service members, past and present, for being here today. Could you please stand and show your appreciation for these brave men and women? here at our Memorial Day Assembly this Monday to honor the National Moment of Remembrance. Wherever you are at 3 p.m., stop what you are doing. Place your hand over your heart as a gesture of gratitude and respect and remember those men and women who have sacrificed for us. Thank you to all our heroes. Remain standing as our heroes exit the gymnasium. All of the veterans, please go back to Mrs. Kalil's room, music room, to have a special lunch honoring you. Art room. I don't mean to interrupt the program at this time, but earlier we recognized people who put this program together. And a great job. But do you know where all this falls on? She was behind the flag, she was standing under the flag. It falls on this young lady that I met back at Peter Fitzpatrick School. And the Marines have the hymn song from the halls of Montezuma and so forth. This lady came from the halls of Peter Fitzpatrick to the halls of Barnum Brook. I'd like Carolyn to please come out here, please. I know she doesn't like this, but here's a person, small of stature, the biggest heart I've ever seen in my life, and a bundle of energy. So let's give her a big rousing pepper applause. And thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. I really don't do anything. It's all these kids here that do everything. It's so easy. So can we have a round of applause for our students because they actually do everything. <laughs> 